you are a mutant. No matter who you are watching this, you are a mutant. Go back long enough and you'll find out that you're supposed to look like this. 375 million years, a whole bunch of trial and error with mutations, and for some reason, two boss baby movies later, and boom, you probably look something like this. Even though mutations are the only reason that life is not just a single cell that kind of just sits there and exists, some mutations aren't so helpful, and they can result in a being whose physiology varies wildly from others of their species. In many species, humans included, young can be born with one eye in the direct center of their face rather than two eyes. This mutation also greatly affects the face. Sometimes there is no nose, and sometimes there is a structure above the eye called the proboscis. Regardless of species, most creatures born with this mutation unfortunately do not survive long, as not only does this condition make breathing either difficult or impossible, but many creatures with this condition have a brain that fuses into a single hemisphere rather than having two. There has never been a record of a human surviving with this condition. There is a goat that survived it and is doing just fine in India. I want one so bad. Look at his face. I love it. Another condition is conjoined twins. In one case, the Colorado brothers, one grew directly out of the chest of the other. The two brothers, Lazarus, the one with legs, and Johannes, the parasitic twin that grew out of the chest, lived in the 1600s. The chest twin was apparently well developed, but it did not speak and it kept its eyes closed and its mouth dangling open at most times. Fun fact, Lazarus was sentenced to death for murder, but he avoided his execution by pointing out that it would also kill his innocent brother. Another darker case of somebody sharing their body with a parasitic twin was Edward Mordrake. Mordrake had a face on the back of his head. Edward was apparently a stone-cold chad with a jawline chiseled so sharp you can impale an insect on it, and he described the face on the back of his head as twisted. He even said it looked evil. He often complained of his parasitic twin whispering about things only spoken in hell inside of his mind, attempting to tempt him into doing inconceivably evil acts. At the age of 23, he unfortunately ended his life because of his parasitic twin's constant tormenting. While Mordrake's actions clearly show that he believed that he was being tormented in his own mind by this parasitic twin, science has not discovered this to be possible. So either our understanding of this condition is wrong, or he was suffering from a mental health condition such as schizophrenia, which would cause him to hear voices in his head. Nowadays, we know that you shouldn't disparage someone who was born differently, because no one can control how they're born. And oftentimes, this can cause great struggle for the afflicted and their families. Go back a hundred years ago, and people profited off of subjective these people to being public spectacles. Now, these cruel quote-unquote freak shows were still taboo at the time, don't get me wrong, but like, this is a hundred years ago. There's no Twitter to get cancelled on. You probably know less than 20 people. Half of them are related to you, one runs the freak show, and most of them are just focused on not dying anyways. So who would you even tell? One weird thing that these shows did in addition to subjecting people with disabilities to the gawking of the average parasite-ridden citizen in the early 1900s was preserve fetuses in jars and put them on display. These were called pickled punks, and they were considered rare and valuable oddities for shows and collectors. The most valuable pickled punks displayed a unique physiology, such as polycephaly or a condition called sirenomelia, which is when the lower half of the body does not have enough of a blood supply to fully develop, and it instead forms a tail-like structure. They claimed that these were baby mermaids. Another thing that they falsely claimed was a mermaid was the Fiji mermaid. The Fiji mermaid is, and I'm not exaggerating here, literally just a monkey sewn to a fish. And lots of people believed it. I wish people were still this easy to fool. If I was alive back then, I'd like to think I'd be stapling dead animals together and selling them at auctions. But even today, there's a good chance I'd be the one bidding. A lot of people say they were born in the wrong generation, but I'm the only one with a valid reason. Hey, anyone remember when Animal Planet decided to make that documentary hinting at the possible existence of mermaids and then everyone roasted the ever-living shit out of them? I mean, lots of animals go into water and evolve to live there after first being on land, for example, cetaceans. I'm not saying I believe in mermaids like that Animal Planet documentary that's really a mockumentary, but the creators didn't think that when they were making it. I'm just saying I've heard much dumber conspiracy theories before. Okay, now I'm rewatching it and finding it convincing and I feel stupid. What, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah. Have you heard of the blue people of Kentucky? In Kentucky, the Fugate family had many members with a bright blue skin tone. This was the result of rare genes thought to be exacerbated by... <coughs> 
<clears throat> keeping it in the family on account of them living in the middle of nowhere. This family baffled science for over 100 years, and then it was discovered that the fugate's blood had a lot of methemoglobin, a mutated version of hemoglobin. This has a blue hue, so they were blue because of their blood. Anyways, the last fugate descendant to have this blue coloration was born in 1975, but the blue quickly faded from their skin as they aged. This is Myrtle Corbin. Myrtle Corbin was born with four legs, two fully grown legs, and two underdeveloped legs. She was very healthy and had no life-threatening complications from her unique anatomy. Her extra legs were more than just cosmetic too. She could move her inner legs, but they were too weak for walking. Also, each pelvis had its own set of functioning reproductive organs that Myrtle used to birth children. She also had two holes in the back, both connected to separate bowels. And before you ask, yeah, they were both functioning. Other conditions include hypertrichosis, a condition that can lead to the entire body being covered in hair, ectrodactyly, a condition that causes the fingers and the human hands to fuse into claw-like appendages, and oh yeah, did you know human beings can grow tails? Yep, humans can grow tails, and they can be over a foot long. So, uh, you know, insert ad-lib furry joke. If you like this video, subscribe, hit the bell with all notifications enabled, like, comment, watch all of my other videos, barrage your friends with messages about my content until they have to block you on all social media, and then just keep, you know, keep doing that. I am pleased to announce that the U of AZFK is opening its first chapter of the Worm Snorting Club. To participate in the Worm Snorting Club, all you gotta do is retweet my most recent tweet. Every time we host a meeting of the Worm Snorting Club, one member will be the best worm snorter and I'll give them a shout out on my YouTube channel for their Twitter page. I want to thank the artists for the show this week. We got Gracelander101, and they drew these things. We also got Space, who drew these things. They're both great artists, and you should go check out their page. I want to end this video off by saying I wasn't trying to make fun of anybody with any sort of uh, condition. I was just trying to shed light on the treatment that was not that long ago. People who forget history are doomed to repeat it. I don't know who said that. Someone important, I guess. As always, like something at the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Where am I?